Hello, welcome to episode 71 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, a thousand more movies you must see before you die, 1924's The Thief of Baghdad, starring Douglas Fairbanks, it is a Douglas Fairbanks production, in fact, this is very much uh, uh, something that he was kind of orchestrating and, and kind of getting done, uh, someone else directed it, I believe Raoul Walsh was the guy who directed this film, but nonetheless, Douglas Fairbanks his stamp is definitely on this uh, this film. And Douglas Fairbanks was a guy who definitely had cemented himself at this point as a big action adventure star in Hollywood, you know, doing all of these great big, you know, adventure films with all these special effects and things like that. Uh, Robin Hood, uh, Zorro, you know, those kinds of movies. And this was the next step, the next evolution of that. It was him in the lead role, The Thief of Baghdad. Um, I, I'm pretty sure, I guess, that it's based on, you know, the, the tales of the Arabian Nights and all that kind of stuff, Aladdin, that territory. And it stars Douglas Fairbanks as this thief, um, Ahmed, who falls in love with the princess of the land of Baghdad and her father will not allow their marriage to take place. And so uh, Ahmed is forced on a huge quest, a massive journey uh, to get these items. I mean, it's, it's very fantasy, you know, 101. Uh, you know, it's all that kind of stuff, going out and, and fighting monsters and going to these unbelievable otherworldly lands and kind of overcoming obstacles and things like that and then coming back to save the day and to to win the hand of the girl it's a very simple setup uh it's a very long film two and a half hours long uh, silent obviously as well and i absolutely fell in love with this film uh when i first watched it and watching it again it holds up just as well as the first viewing it um it's a great adventure. I mean, it really, really is. The fact that it's silent really bears no little to no kind of uh, bearing on, on how I enjoy it. And I don't know if that would be the same with other people. Again, I'm very into silent films, but it's uh, it's just such a fun watch. The scale of the production is, is phenomenal. I mean, it's not the first time this happened. You know, you go back to 1916 with Intolerance, um, which we'll probably be talking about at some point. It has to be in the book. Um, that was a huge production too, but this one, I mean, it's just, it's staggering that the sets, the amount of extras that were employed, uh, and, and it's not just the fact that the sets are big, there's so many of them, because Ahmed goes on such, the, this such a journey, so many different locations, so many different setups, you know, from going underwater and going into these caves and fighting these, these monsters and going up into the sky, up into the heavens, and then flying the magic carpet around and the desert, I mean, there's so many locations in the film. Uh, and almost all of them are entirely just, you know, sets, backdrops, all that kind of stuff. So the artistry in the set design on this really is, is almost a star of the film unto itself, I think. Uh, Douglas Fairbanks is brilliant, you know, from the very first scene in the film you see him, he's kind of just uh, lying asleep, you know, in the, in the streets. And people are walking past and stuff, and he's lying there with his arm draped across this wall. And someone bends down to take a drink, and... Uh, he snatches their purse, and so he wasn't asleep. He was kind of waiting there, like playing possum and you know, stealing things from people. And that's what he does at the beginning of the film. He's very much the lovable kind of rogue, the the that old scamp, you know, still stealing money off the rich people and stuff. And uh, he he has a reputation of being the thief of Baghdad. Uh, but when he discovers the princess, that's when he starts to really kind of wow. You know, he's kind of taken away by her, and and yeah, it, it takes a while to get going in terms of him going off on the adventure. But uh, just the way that he plays it, you know, is so entertaining. He has such a, a physical charisma, you know, really just it just pops off the screen. And the, the, the set pieces that they do and the, the way that they work it and stuff, him breaking into the palace to see the princess, there's loads of, of fun scenes to watch. And then once you get to that quest, once you get to that journey and other people vying for the princess's hand and all the while he's off, you know, doing this, this huge monumental task. It's a lot of fun. Um, so there's not much more to it, really. It's it's a premier fantasy film. I think it's one of the best fantasy films of all time. Um, just from the, the the imagination that went into this, and it, it's just a joy to watch. It really, really is. As a fan of fantasy quest adventure stories in general, you know, outside of just films, but I love seeing it in a film. You know, uh, this is one of the best ones and one of my favorites. Is it a film you must see before you die? Absolutely, it really is. It is again one of the. It's 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 a high point for me for fantasy films. It really is. I mean, you you think about films. I guess like Lord of the Rings, things like that. Uh, in terms of recent big fantasy films, they they they're not really as big now. You know, Warcraft we had this year, which didn't seem to do too well. Um, but I mean, you go back to the silent era, and that to me is one of the best fantasy films. Um, it just it just pops with with fun, 
and the thrill of adventure, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. It's just an immensely enjoyable film, and I think that uh, anyone should try and give it a go, whether they like silent films or not. So that's it for this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.